I'd like to welcome everybody to the May 17th, 2022 council meeting. There was no closed meeting before this uh, open agenda. Uh, the meeting will be live streamed, recorded and available on the internet uh, by visiting the town's website at www.perrysound.ca. I'd also like to acknowledge that we're on the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg people under the Robinson Huron Treaty and the waterways traveled by the Métis of this region. Are there any additions or prioritization of the agenda? Not seeing any. Okay. May I have a mover and second? Oh, uh, mover and seconder for the agenda, please. Councilor Borneman, Councilor Keith, that the council agenda for May 17th, 2022 be approved as circulated. Anyone opposed to that? Nope. Okay. That's carried. Any disclosure of pecuniary interest or the general nature thereof? Not seeing any. Okay. May I have a mover and seconder for the previous meeting's minutes? Councilor McCann, Councilor Burden, that the minutes from the regular council meeting held May 3rd, 2022 be approved as circulated. Any discussion or comments on those minutes? Nope. Okay. Anyone opposed to passing those minutes? Opposed, so that's carried. Questions of staff? No? No questions of staff tonight? All right, okay. Correspondence, uh, Ms. Johnson. Worship, we just have one item of correspondence and that is from uh, Pat Patricia Coles of 295 McPherson Air Cadets uh, Squadron with a request to hold an annual TAG day in Perry Sound on Saturday, May 28th. And that is handled by a resolution on the agenda under item 951. That's it. Great, thank you. Uh, well, we don't have any deputations from what I can see. So we're gonna go right to reports and we'll start with Councillor Borneman tonight. Well, I'll keep this moving right along, Mr. Muir. I've had a quiet couple of weeks, so I have no report this evening. I do want to extend my condolences to the family of former Mayor Adams who passed away last night. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor McCann. Uh, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, fellow council members, staff, and uh, the public. Uh, Monday afternoon, May 9th, I attended the Waterfront Advisory Committee meeting in Council Chambers, our second meeting since coming together, but really the first one in which we really got down to business. Uh, we discussed the possibility of doing something with the West Perry Sound District Museum regarding the model train installation. As you know, the model is done to scale and infused with a great deal of history, which relates uh, to our waterfront, among other things. Uh, we talked about arrangements for the arrival of the HMCS Oriole to our uh, harbor and the Great Lakes, which is, of course, the Great Lakes cruise ships. Uh, uh, with, uh, sorry, the HMCS Oriole, which will be uh, visiting our harbor, as well as the Great Lake cruise ships that uh, will also be here this year. The committee uh, will be treated to a, a boat trip on board Bob Corrigan's Cambrian. Uh, in uh, early June, generously hosted by, uh, by Mr. Corrigan. Uh, I have something special I want to pass along here tonight, something I'm very passionate uh, about. I'd like to speak to the news item. Uh, Lakeland proposes new 160-bed long-term care facility, uh, closed Belvedere Heights home for the aged. Uh, Belvedere would close its beds, move to new site. That, uh, under those headlines, was published online by the Perrystown North Star Wednesday, May 4th, and in print Thursday, May 12th. Uh, this news item has upset a number of readers. Um, one said she was actually shocked, while others who harbor a great deal of affection for Belvedere were caught off guard and very concerned about the perceived doomed fate for the home uh, those who live here, the families of residents, staff, volunteers, fundraisers, understandably feel like they had been uh, blindsided. 
Although the news item spoke to a number of timeline actions, it is my belief that it does not reflect the true story insofar as the who is doing what and the overall spirit of what this initiative uh, is, which is of course a campus of care model. Point one, Lakeland Long-Term Care did not ask the province to let it assume management of Belvedere Heights long-term care beds. Um, and uh, move them to the West Prairie Sound Health Center. It was the Belvedere Board of Management asking each of the municipalities to put forth to the Ministry of Long-Term Care a request to take back to the beds. And it was the first step necessary to move the beds into a campus of care model. The North Star paper printed a more accurate description of the timeline of the events in August of last year when it wrote the request as part of plans from Belvedere Heights Lakeland Long-Term Care and the West Prairie Sound Health Center to recreate Belvedere Heights on a new campus of care, a, prov a province-wide initiative to bring community support services, housing options and long-term care beds closer together and run them under one umbrella. This quote speaks precisely to the spirit and principle of what we're trying to do. Point two, to say that Belvedere is managed by the West Prairie Sound Health Center is misleading. The uh, Belvedere Board of Management continues to be in full control over its facility. Following the resignation of our last CAO, the Belvedere Board considered several options. The board opted to reach out to the West Prairie Sound Health Center uh, with a contractual means of subscribing to services, which include an on-site administrator financial management and some human resources. And while senior staff from the health center attend the Belvedere board meetings, they have no voting privileges. Uh, I will sincerely state that the health center has provided invaluable assistance to Belvedere uh, under, this, uh, under, the, under these contractual means. As a council in the town of Perry Sound and as a board member of Belvedere Heights, I've been most passionate about preserving the Belvedere brand. Belvedere has garnered a real love and a great sentiment uh, for the home. It has outgrown its location and for many uh, sensible reasons needs to be relocated for expansion. I understand that the Campus of Care Ad Hoc Committee is preparing a public release strategy which will be aimed at establishing a contextually correct baseline to serve as an accurate point of reference. And uh, that quote is from Jim Hanna. And that's my report for tonight. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Burden. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, I have a brief report. Uh, on May the 11th, the scheduled meeting of the Downtown Business Association was canceled at the last minute due to a lack of quorum. Uh, that meeting has been rescheduled for May the 25th. Uh, I would like, however, to report that we are still searching uh, in search of a, a DBA administrator. Uh, this is now becoming a full-time job, 35 hours per week. Uh, we'll pay up to $20 an hour, and we have no applicants that I'm aware of at this stage. Uh, we have apparently had a couple of members show some interest in becoming members of the board, which is encouraging. And I want to again mention the Summer Festival on Saturday, July 16th, provided council approves that this evening. Uh, please mark that date on your calendar. And as I mentioned, Art in the Park is the same weekend. So let's pray for warm and sunny weather and it should be a busy downtown that weekend. Uh, on May 12th, I attended the uh, virtual monthly meeting of the District Social Services Administration Board. Uh, we were treated to a presentation by Ian Holmes, who is the IT guy for the DSAB. And it was very enlightening to see what technology they deal with on a daily basis, way beyond me. Uh, otherwise, things are busy as usual, but running smoothly, thanks to a great staff and management team. And I also would like to pass my condolences on to the family of Richard Adams, a dear old friend and, and former mayor of the town of Perry Sound, uh, passed away last evening. And... Uh, uh, rest in peace, Richard. And that's my report. Thank you. Um, for uh, just uh, before I go to Councillor Keith, uh, Forrest, did you get an email from um, Councillor Horn? He's having trouble logging in. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'm working with him through email to try to get him okay. onto the meeting. Okay, sounds good. Thank you, Councillor Keith. 
Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, fellow councilors, uh, staff, and the public. Uh, my report will be very short as Councillor McCann has uh, uh, related the majority of what happened at the Waterfront Committee that I attended. I should also indicate, though, uh, at that committee meeting, April McNamara um, certainly advised us also that the plan is for down at the waterfront to have some webcam uh, cameras in that area and also some accessible binoculars. And I think that will be really great for people down in that area and wanting to take a, a little view of things. So I think that's uh, really appreciative there. And the other thing would be, of course, uh, I'm paying my respects and sorry to hear of the loss of former Mayor Richard Adams. That's my report. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Keith. Councillor Backman. Thank you, Your Worship. Good evening, Council staff and members from the public. Um, I do send my condolences to former Mayor Richard Adams and uh, may he rest in peace. Um, I will tonight, um, thank you for the fellow councillors who made it brief because I will um, share my OBRA report with everyone this evening um, to highlight a few workshops and speeches. Um, that I attended as well as presentations. Um, Bruce Katz uh, was very interesting. He spoke about the new disorder, the work from home and pandemic challenges uh, that have been caused uh, to municipalities and cities across the nations and that we've needed to become innovative and adaptive, have had to invest in climate change initiatives through infrastructure, self-fulfillment centers, supply chain challenges, and we needed to become sub-geographic supply chain centers. Everything has become regionalized and really stressed in the investment in infrastructure to really grow your um, economy. I attended a nuclear waste webinar um, by a company called NWO, who is responsible for transporting nuclear waste for throughout Ontario, and they highlighted the plan for the next 20 to 150 years to store um, nuclear waste in bedrock in Ontario and currently have two locations. So that was something of interest to see um, where they're going with that and how that may um, affect different communities in the north. Um, I attended a seminar on becoming a truly smart and connected community. They expressed the importance of innovative intelligence systems that need to be implemented to grow community. I also attended an emerging municipal leaders webinar or workshop. I talked about how mentorship is a big part of municipal government. And I can honestly attest to friendships that I've made through my participation patient, um, both uh, locally and uh, again at conferences that have been invaluable in helping me evolve and become a better municipal leader. Small municipalities often do not have the budget to pilot everything and it is a good strategy for smaller municipalities to research pilot projects of large urban municipalities to determine whether the feedback and success of the private project could support our community. This allows us not to take bets that don't pay off. Um, they talked about asset management and how we need to focus on tomorrow. Um, but probably one of the most moving um, speeches that um, I witnessed was from Chief Cadmus Delorme from Cowas First Nation, where 751 unmarked graves have been found. He spoke about how decolonization is only the beginning and the validation of pain. He hopes we do not become numb with the residential school system. He says he's not here to add up the score. He is here to open our minds about truth and reconciliation. He said that the Indian Act was only to imprison the minds of the First Nation people, and the residential schools had one purpose to brainwash the Kawasas people. The First Nations are right holders and they want to catch up and that we need to have uncomfortable conversations about residential schools. And he encouraged everyone um, uh, to read the recommendations from the commission. It really was a moving and touching presentation by him. Um, finally, um, other two items of great interest that I learned through conversations with colleagues in other communities was um, 
a not-for-profit organization that many municipalities, communities have, and that's called Friends of the Library. Um, Friends of the Library is a separate not-for-profit group that support the libraries in their community through volunteering and fundraising. Also with the NFP status, it creates an opportunity for more access to funding. Um, this may could be a solution for the Perry Sound Library. We have seen that the town has needed to submit grants on behalf of the library, which in turn uh, makes us almost compete against our own needs. So this may be a win-win for everyone. And it is something that I will further discuss with the library board in hopes to have further discussions at our council table. Um, and lastly, I learned that uh, many municipalities were eyeing um, the Green Municipal Fund for their recreation um, centers. Um, the grants are up into the millions to support LEAD initiatives. And that is something that um, I look forward to hearing more about as um, the, the development of our own recreation and culture center evolves and seeing how we incorporate uh, these lead initiatives and look at the opportunities for these um, funding opportunities to support um, obviously this big investment. Um, just, I guess, my personal take on the OGRA conference. Um, Communities need to be innovative. They need to invest in infrastructure, recreation facilities, green public transit, and active living needs to be at the forefront. Affordable housing needs to be addressed by all levels of government. It all helps economic development and social change. Uh, communities that progress are the ones that develop positive working social partnerships and relationships with their stakeholders and residents. Uh, staff cannot do it alone. It takes partnerships and teamwork to build a community that is progressive, livable, and enjoyable for everyone. Thank you, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Well, I think that's everybody. Now, Councillor Horn is still trying to get in, so um, Mr. Pangra is, is working with him on that, so. Uh, I'll do my report. Maybe he'll be here by then. Uh, so council staff and public, uh, May 9th to 11th uh, was the Phnom Conference in, in North Bay. Uh, it was well attended, a well-attended conference with a good showing from vendors. The keynote speaker was Doug Griffiths, author of the book 13 Ways to Kill Your Community. He's an excellent speaker, and the material that he covered in his book is absolutely fantastic. Um, at some point over the next year or two, we should definitely have him here to do a talk. Um, it was really, really well done and, and really makes you think about things that, uh, that happen in, in communities. Nuclear Waste Management Organization is getting closer to choosing a location. Uh, they made a presentation on their process and their plan. And um, Dr. Sarita Verma gave everyone an update on the Northern School of Medicine which now has university status. And this is a, a big achievement for, for them. Um, MPAC also gave an update. Um, one of the highlights uh, was the Northern Leaders debate at uh, the North Bay Capital Center. And I really have to thank Phnom and Noma for, for hosting this event. It was a lot of logistics to work out and um, was extremely well attended. So, uh, um, Beyond the delegates, um, people that wanted to come in had to pay a fee to get in, uh, and there were a number of them there as well. I'd also like to thank our EDO, Vlad, for being there. Perry Sound sponsored the reception before the dinner on May 10th, and it was our opportunity to invite delegates to the Phnom Conference here in Perry Sound next year, as we will be the host community. It's a great event for our community. Uh, it'll bring a few hundred people in our community for a few days. So we certainly look forward to it. And I know they really appreciate Perry Sound as well. On the final day of the event, I gave an update from AMO. And I'd like to thank the Phnom Board and their Executive Director, Mac Bain, for putting on a great conference. Um, uh, May 12th was the DSAB meeting. And Council should have been forwarded uh, the information from that meeting. Everyone should have received that. Um, Councillor Burden covered that off very well. Uh, 
uh, making a comment because today uh, I noticed two adults in two different locations um, on bicycles that didn't stop at stop signs. They just went straight through. And a reminder to cyclists that they are to follow the rules of the road, stop at stop signs and signal when making a turn. And um, I, how dangerous can it be to just drive straight through uh, on a bicycle? So anyway, if people can, I know people complain about vehicles making rolling stops and, you know, scooting right hands around corners, but uh, when it's as blatant as what I saw today, it's um, cyclists need to, to uh, follow the rules of the road as well. Um, Richard Adams, former mayor and councillor for the town of Perry Sound, for 23 years spanning five dec decades, died uh, last evening. Mr. Adams first served as a member of five consecutive councils from 1973 to 1982 at a time when terms were two years. Following the closure of CIL, where he was a manager, he left the area returning in the 1990s and to council for another three consecutive terms from 1998 to 2006. Mr. Adams finished his public service in 2010 after serving a final four-year term as mayor from 2007 to 2010. Upon his retirement from public office, Mr. Adams expressed pride in a number of achievements, including growth and development, refurbishment of the downtown, uh, rebuild of the Bob Yor Community Center and town office, and most importantly, the establishment of Canador College campus. Uh, the flags uh, at the town office and the Bob Yor Community Center are at half mast as a sign of respect and condolences to the family. I will say too that um, uh, former Mayor Adams was also a member of the Phnom Board, uh, AMO Board, and uh, OSM at one point. And in conversations that we had afterwards, he was pleased that um, I carried on uh, a provincial involvement in different com committees uh, throughout the province because he knew how important it was to a community to have that knowledge and input into those different organizations and uh, to help it helps move a community forward um, so that was good so certainly my my condolences to his family uh, in this uh, trying time and uh, again the flags are at half mast out of respect uh, so with regard to the food cycler program we have less than 50 food cycler units available for the pilot program, and we expect the units to be available near the end of May. So the food cycler is countertop kitchen appliance that takes food scraps and within a few hours turns it into dry, sterile soil, uh, dry, sterile soil additive. If you haven't signed up yet, please check the link on the website for details. Like as of today, there was about 50 units left. So get part of the program and be part of the solution. That'd be great. And that's my report. Thank you. And I don't see Councillor Horn here yet. So he must be having some real drastic computer issues. Okay. First item is 931. Moved by Councillor Burden and seconded by Councillor Borneman. The Council of the Corporation of the Town of Perry Sound declare the Downtown Perry Sound Business Association Summer in the Sound event, July 16, 2022, an event of municipal significance, and that Council provide relief from bylaw 2009-5301 being the bylaw to regulate noise in the municipality and to permit noise on July 16th, 2022 from 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. for the purpose of the event. Any discussion? Okay. Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? No one's opposed, that's carried. Okay. 
Moved by Councillor Keith and Councillor Horn's not on here yet. So, uh, Councillor Backman. The Council of the Corporation of Town of Parisan received the report on the status of the 2022 Wabano Beach Swim Program and provision of lifeguards entitled 2022 Wabano Beach Swim Program Update. So if someone could give us uh, an update, verbal update, so the public is aware of um, what's going on. Mr. Wheeler, welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, it's good to be here as always. Uh, through your worship, I'd just like to provide counsel with the update that staff have been unsuccessful in hiring lifeguards um, or swim instructors for the provision of swim program or lifeguarding at Wabano Beach in 2022. Uh, as has been mentioned before, we're experiencing uh, an in industry-wide shortage of lifeguards across the board, partially stemming from the COVID-19 pandemic, which meant that certification opportunities weren't there for the public. Um, further to Council's direction at the April 5th meeting, staff have engaged in conversations with staff from the municipality of McDougal and Seabrook Township uh, to see how we can address some of these issues on a regional basis. Those conversations are ongoing. Um, as of today, as of this report, there are, uh, McDougal is in the same situation as the town of Perry Sound, being that unable to hire enough staff to run a swim program. Seguin has been able to hire some staff to run their program, although they're having to modify their program um, to accommodate uh, lesser staff complement than usual. Um, members of the public of the town of Perry Sound can still participate in swim lessons if they contact the township of Seguin. Okay, all right. Any questions? Councillor Barnuman. Um, Mr. Wheeler, Wheeler, is it fair to say that the kind of the start stop uh, part of attempting to put this program together hurt our recruitment efforts? Through your worship, it certainly didn't help. Um, I'm reluctant to say that it was the sole source of our, uh, uh, of the result here. Um, I think that on the whole, we're seeing that there's a shortage of qualified candidates because from the years of 2020 to pretty well all of 2021, there were few and the opportunities for people to become certified lifeguards were few and far between because in-person indoor activity was postponed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So there's a bit of a backlog of uh, candidates that, you know, were working through the, the steps to become certified lifeguards. And in that time, there was, it's entirely possible that they found other avenues of employment and pursued other opportunities, which, uh, um, is kind of the result that we're feeling right now. Just yeah, as follow. A, yeah, yep. just as a follow up, I'm I'm wanting to move that we direct staff to again put this search out in 2023, and hopefully uh, by then the backlog will have been conquered, maybe, and and uh, lifeguard and swim instructors will be available to us. Fair enough. Um, I mean, obviously, the money that we've uh, put it, you know, budgeted this year can be redone for next year in 2023. So that's fine. Um, yes, Mr. Harris. Um, uh, through the mayor to just uh, add to Mr. Wheeler's response, the swim program was never uh, planned to be out of the budget. Uh, was only the lifeguards. So we haven't been able to attract swim instructors for the various reasons that Mr. Wheeler spoke to. So um, the, uh, the decision on council about considering taking lifeguards out uh, shouldn't have, uh, shouldn't have affected the, uh, the swim program. We had trouble getting instructors. Yeah, fair enough. Okay. Can yes. Councillor Keith is next and then Councillor Backman. Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, a couple of questions um, and comments. The, the question, though, uh, first of all, 
in reference to what happens tonight, uh, will that be on the town website so people will clearly know and the plan before of the posting of signage so any anybody that comes to visit at, at the beach and use the beach will be aware of what the situation is? That's my first question. Through your worship, yes, the town website has been updated. So if the public goes on there now, they'll see that uh, provision of lessons and guarding at Wabano Beach in 2022 is not happening. And further to your second question there, um, staff have already begun the process of identifying an, uh, an action plan to post the uh, appropriate signage in accordance with industry standards and best practices um, to inform the public and anybody else that's at the beach uh, that the facility is unsupervised. Uh, my other comments would be, I'd read uh, an article, uh, so be it, about a month ago, and I received the impression that in Toronto also, it's not just the town of Perry Sound, whose various areas, as was indicated there, are having the same issue. And even the swim programs that were available in a much larger center have not been able. It's been really reduced. I am uh, thinking about Councillor Borneman's comment about uh, the posting for 20. 21, uh, 23, and I would think that uh, maybe we put the bite on it and uh, for 2023, we get uh, postings out uh, early in January. So we go right ahead of the uh, weather and see what is uh, happening there. And uh, I think uh, it, the efforts that uh, staff have made here trying to see if we can make this work and trying to also for the future make something work on a more regional area certainly is uh, proactive. So uh, I appreciate uh, those efforts that are being made. So thank you. Thanks. I'd like to deal with this resolution first and then we can deal with the direction afterwards, if that would be good. So Councillor ba Backman's next. And Councillor McCann. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, Mr. Wheeler, thank you for um, being here this evening to discuss this. Um, could you elaborate on um, what your discussions with our municipal neighbors led to and how um, just, you know, elaborate on those conversations? Sure, through Your Worship. Um, the conversations with McDougall and Seguin have, uh, kind of centered around identifying common problems and common issues that we can find a collaborative solution to. It seems that um, all regional municipalities right now are having difficulty finding qualified candidates. We've identified the fact that there's a bit of a gap in opportunity um, to obtain your lifeguarding certification in this area. Typically what's been the case for all regional municipalities is that um, the majority of our staff come from uh, seasonal residents, so people whose full-time residency is in southern Ontario, for example, so where there's ample opportunity to get your lifeguarding certification. So we've identified something that that is an action point. Uh, first off, is to uh, work together and collaboratively collaboratively offer uh, certification courses for potential candidates in the area, opening up more opportunities for locals to um, apply for these jobs. Um, other things that we've um, discussed include, um, yeah, that was kind of the primary thing, the primary point of those discussions, um, but we're just kind of finding collaborative uh, opportunities to, to address these issues. We did discuss things like a joint um, delivery of service, but that brings about logistic problems with uh, the geography around here and the nature of the students or of the employees that would be uh, delivering these services. We're talking about students who may not have reliable transportation or who may need to bike or use active transportation to get to work. So offering um, services at facilities that are geographically far apart um, doesn't necessarily make too much sense. And just as a follow-up question, what is the starting wage for our lifeguards, if you know offhand? Yep, through your worship, um, starting wages for lifeguards are fifteen seventy-five an hour, so we're about fifty cents above minimum wage. Uh, instructors start at sixteen twenty-five, so about a dollar above minimum wage, and then we have higher wages for our head lifeguard and aquatic supervisor positions that are 
very competitive. I'd say the aquatics uh, coordinator is 18.75 an hour and the head lifeguard, I believe is 17.75 an hour. Well, uh, thank you. I just wanna note, uh, I was speaking with uh, a lady in our community who um, uh, was a lifeguard in Toronto, uh, she said 30 years ago, she was making $28 an hour. <laughs> um, and interesting enough, um, her she works at the hospital now and her, her brother was a lifeguard in Perry Sound. And so she was, she just made that comment to me and I just thought, well, huh, that's rather interesting. So it'd be interesting to see if, um, you know, if we, were a little bit more higher on the pay scale that might be more attractive but i understand um, i'd like to thank you for all your efforts and uh, your staff and uh, pursuing um, the direction from council with this thank you Councilor mccann uh yes um i guess the proper signage obviously i think as you spoke to uh, would be in place to warn people that you you know you're swimming at your own risk um the old town beach the the, the floating I, I you know i know that wabano park beach you have the floating markers so that swimmers are aware of where the drop off is uh have they typically been installed in the old town beach can you tell me that and if not is it some is there a possibility of having those lines put in for the, uh, uh, you know, because the old town beach certainly still gets a lot of use. Through your worship, uh, to my knowledge, we haven't had the floating buoy line at uh, the old town beach or Centennial beach. Um, that was an action item that came out of the life saving society audit that took place in 2021. What their, one of their suggestions was to install um, a buoy line at Centennial Beach. So that's uh, one of the um, items that staff will be looking to implement this year. Okay. Well, so then my follow-up would be, do we need direction for that then? I, I certainly would like to see that happen for this summer. Because I think it's important, you know, the, the irony is that's the beach where you have the drop-off, which is fairly significant for, uh, for swimmers. Mr. Wheeler, were you going to do that this summer or no? Uh, through your worship, and maybe if Ms. McNamara wants to uh, comment as well, um, that, that is an action item that was on the uh, Life Saving Society audit, um, so we were looking to, uh, to address that. Okay, all right. I, um, I'd like to deal with this, this item first that we're, we're dealing with right now, and then deal with anything else afterwards, but I just, I guess I just need to know, do you need direction from council or are you just going to do it anyway? If I may, through your worship, yeah. we, we don't, we do not require direction from council okay. at this point. This All is right. something that staff can act on independently. Okay, that's good then. Thanks. So respectfully then, so that is a yes then for the, for the summer? That's what I hear. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments on the resolution? No. Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? I'm not seeing anyone opposed, so that's carried. So, Councillor Borneman, you had a uh, direction that you wanted to put forward with regard to 2023. Yep. Thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted the uh, direction to go to staff to include uh, monies in the 2023 budget for lifeguards and swim instructor programs at uh, Wabano Beach uh, pending recruitment, I guess. Yeah. And advertise early. <laughs> okay. Uh, Councillor McCann, you're seconding that? Yes. Okay. All right. Any discussion on that direction? I don't see any hands up. So anyone opposed to passing that direction? No one's opposed, that's carried. Councillor Horn, welcome. You were having some issues. Thank you, sorry about that. First time ever had technical issues logging in. So if you could give me a quick half an hour recap, that'd be great, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I was going to ask you was, is did you have any kind of a report you wanted to? No, thanks for asking. I'll, I'll skip tonight. Sorry okay. about that again. Right. Technology. Yeah, there you go. All right. 
Next item is 933. Moved by Councillor McCann, seconded by Councillor Bachman, that Council accept a bid from Vermeer Canada Incorporated for a new model BC 1000 XL brush chipper in the amount of $49,799.99, including taxes, delivery, and trade in of the 2012 Vermeer brush chipper, this being the lowest compliant bid received. Any discussion? Nope. Okay. Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? I don't see anyone opposed, so that's carried. Moved by Councillor Horn and seconded by Councillor McCann. The council accept a bid from Croft Industrial Incorporated for a new dock system for the salt dock boat launch in the amount of $48,845, including taxes, delivery, and installation. This being the lowest qualified bid of two bids received. Any discussion on this? Councillor Borneman? I'm always happy to see a local company win these tenders. I'm just wondering if we have a timeline when we should expect this thing to be installed. That's always a, you know, an issue. Boating season is upon us. Mm. Uh, yes, for you, Mr. Mayor. Um, basically in the tender I put together, um, they'll have to have it in before the fall. I know due to lack of supplies and, um, basically, um, how busy they are. Um, it'll be probably pushing it to get it any time early before the boating season this year. So we're looking for in the fall. Okay. So I guess we're living with what we have then for, for this year this season, right? Yes, we are also too, um, just for an update, the Wabano Beat boat launch. Um, we did some repairs to it today and the no, new dock for it is actually going to be starting installed tomorrow and it should be open before the long weekend. Excellent, good, Yep. good. Councillor Keith. Yes, I, I was just gonna comment that I would expect that a local company would be aware that uh, doing work in uh, the high season uh, on such a project would be detrimental to the town. So therefore doing it in the fall would seem uh, most appropriate and, and probably common sense. I think a local company would respect that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other? Questions, comments? No? Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? Don't see anyone opposed, so that is carried. Just as an aside, uh, if you get a chance to go down and take a walk on the new uh, breakwater at the uh, Big Sound Marina, it, it is absolutely fantastic. Um, very cool. And Chief Thompson, Remind us who did the work on that one. Who are you, Mr. Mayor? Sorry, you surprised me there with uh, a request. Oh, sorry. Speak. Um, uh, yes, uh, the Big Sound Breakwater is uh, in. It is spectacular. Everyone should go down and visit it. Uh, the two principals who worked on the project, Tatham Engineering, did design work and uh, the tendering and all the inspection processes for us and crop industrial uh, built and installed the, um, the facility. I had the opportunity today to meet with Tatham, uh, the Tatham representative, um, as well as crop representatives on site to do our final inspection, which was uh, a couple of very minor little things were identified and they're going to be repairing. And I think there's a great amount of opportunity in the future for our um, residents to be able to go down and enjoy Big Sound Marina in a way that they never have before for people who don't have boats. It's the uh, next best thing to being out on the water, being out on that breakwater. Thank you, that, it, it is really cool. Yeah, as soon as you sent the, the information that it was done, I went down and took a look and it's amazing. So thank you. Um, next is 941, moved by Councillor Backman, second by Councillor Keith. Council for the Corporation of the Town of Perry Sound hereby implements a pilot program for 2022 that will allow an exemption process for residents to park overnight 
for free at the Champagne Street Boat Launch. Who wants to talk about this one? Chief Thompson or Ms. Kruger is on as well, right? There. Through your worship, um, this report proposes that for the 2022 season, uh, we implement a pilot program whereby we would provide exemption to residents for the parking at Champagne Street Boat Launch. Um, so as you all know, last year we did implement a parking permit system at the boat launches and there was interest by council to have us look at a process whereby residents could be exempt um, from those parking permits for the overnight portion um, of parking. So this report proposes that we do implement this uh, program for this year. Um, residents would have to apply and provide proof of residency. Once they had done that, um, we would propose that they would provide us with an email, uh, just letting us know the dates that they would like to park, thereby we would know which vehicles to expect to be at the boat launches on certain dates. And this would work in conjunction with the um, enforcement and patrols that we do at the boat launches currently. Um, and that way there would be a way that uh, residents could ask for this exemption if they were interested in parking overnight at the boat launches. Of course, the daytime parking remains free for everybody uh, between the hours of 5 a.m. and 11 p.m. This is just for that portion of overnight parking. Okay. Any other, any questions, Councillor Backman? Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, yes, Ms. Kruger, I'd just like to extend my, um, Gracious thanks for you and your team to uh, further review this and come up with a creative solution um, that hopefully will create a win-win. Um, as I noted in my report this evening, pilot projects are, um, you know, really a great way to determine um, how things could be successful if they will be. So um, just us taking that step, um, I, I think we're just really moving in the right direction. So thank you again to everyone involved. Councillor Keith. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Kruger, I just had a couple of questions. I think the idea is positive. I'm wondering about, um, is there a limit on the number of vehicles that uh, from one residence that would be able to park? Like if there was four, uh, there's a taxpayer and there's four vehicles in the yard, would four vehicles then be able to park or is there some limit on the number of vehicles that would be in that parking space? through your worship, we would limit this at this time to one vehicle per household. Um, that way it would provide them access to the bay with the free overnight parking for the one vehicle and perhaps trailer attached. Um, we do want to try this as a pilot project because we don't know what the uptake will be and we're not sure what the repercussions will be on the parking at the boat launches. And if that's something that's identified as uh, a need by residents, we can, we can review that. Uh, but we felt that one vehicle per household was, was sufficient. And, and one final question, and that would be, um, do you have... Uh, you may not know the figure right now, but do you have a rough idea of the um, uptake you're thinking of for residents that would possibly be needing this service? Like, is there a ballpark figure you're thinking, or are you just not clear at all in that area? Um, through your worship, we did review some of the overnight parking permit information that was received last year. Um, and based on that, we would assume possibly in the range of 25 to 50 residents. However, there's the unknown of perhaps more residents would park if that fee were no longer a barrier to parking. Uh, so we may see a larger uptake. Um, and also we've seen a real increase in boating in the last few years. Now with the higher gas prices, we may not see that same increase this year, but um, if we continue along that trend with, with more boating um, being, you know, the launches being used more actively, we may see those numbers go up as well. Any other questions, comments? No? Okay. Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? I don't see anyone opposed, so that's carried.
Moved by Councillor Borneman, second by Councillor Burden. The Council of the Corporation of the Town of Perry Sound permits the 295 McPherson Squadron Royal Canadian Air Cadets to hold a tag day on Saturday, May 28th at uh, businesses in town from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Any discussion? Nope. Okay. Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? No. Now it's carried then. I'm going to have to make a shift here because the sun is. We really need to get another, some kind of a heavier duty screen on that one window there. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, we were experiencing a uh, total eclipse of the mayor. <laughs> yeah, that's what it feels like right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, moved by Councillor Burton, second by Councillor Horn. Whereas deaf blindness is a unique disability that incorporates the loss of both sight and hearing, and individuals who are deaf blind can live full, meaningful lives as independently as possible with the right supports in place, such as intervener services and whereas national deafblind awareness committee support community partners and individuals who are deafblind to increase their independence and improve their quality of life through specialized services and whereas everyone is encouraged to help promote deafblindness by attending an awareness event and proclaiming june as national deafblind awareness month in your community and checking out the calendar of events on www dot deafblindnetworkontario.com and that's www.deafblindnetworkontario.com that includes flag raisings and light up lighting up of local landmarks in communities across Canada and whereas June should be designated as a national deafblind awareness month to recognize and celebrate the contributions that individuals who are deafblind making their communities with the support of interveners who serve as a bridge to communication for individuals who are deafblind. Therefore, the Corporation of the Town of Perry Sound hereby proclaims June 2022 as National Deafblind Awareness Month. Any discussion? Anyone opposed to passing this resolution? Nope, that's carried then. by Councillor Keith and second by Councillor Burden, whereas although 86 countries have signed or ratified the UN Treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons, Canada has not yet made that commitment. And whereas a NANOS research poll on April 6, 2021, demonstrated that 74% of Canadians supporting, support joining the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and the cities of Cape Breton, Halifax, Langley, Montreal, Oakville, Bellum, North Saanich, uh, Saanich, Souk, Squamish, Toronto, Vancouver, Victoria, West Vancouver, White Rock, and Winnipeg have joined the international campaign against nuclear weapons, otherwise known as ICANN, cities appeal endorsing the treaty. And whereas the more Canadian cities that endorse the ICANN cities appeal, the more the prohibition of nuclear weapons becomes a priority at the national level. And whereas today there are roughly 13,100 nuclear warheads in the world and the International Committee of the Red Cross recognizes that nuclear weapons are an intolerable threat to humanity. Now, therefore, be it resolved, the Town of Perry Sound supports the United Nations Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons by joining the International Campaign to Abolish Nuclear Weapons, ICANN, Cities Appeal, and urging the Canadian federal government to sign and ratify this treaty, and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be sent to the Honourable Melanie Jolie, Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honourable Anita Anand, Minister of National Defense and the Honorable Marco uh, Mendocino, Minister of Public Safety. Any questions, comments? No? Anyone opposed to this? Passing this resolution? No? 
Okay, that's carried. Okay, moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Horn. A bylaw number 2022-7245 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement with IntelliVote Systems Incorporated for use of information related to impacts voter notification files uh, be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? That's carried. Moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Horn. The bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? No. Councillor McCann? And this would be then for Ms. Johnson then. Um, this is exactly the same protocol or model as we used in 20. Uh, 18, <laughs> I think they're per second. Uh, and this is the only option for voting. There's no paper ballot as in the past then. So actually uh, to you, your worship, I would say that we have already dealt with an agreement with IntelliVote to handle the uh, internet and telephone voting. This particular agreement is a requirement uh, of the existing terms of an agreement, uh, a use of information agreement that we have with MPAC. Um, uh, so the terms of that agreement require that if, in addition, another third party is requiring use of that same information and that, that third party is, is uh, connected to the town, then we need to have an agreement to permit the extension of that use of use of information agreement that, that the town has with MPAC to in turn with this other third party. So that's what this agreement is for, is okay, offered. Great. great, thank you. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Nope. Okay, anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? Nope, that is carried then. Moved by Councillor Burden and seconded by Councillor McCann, that bylaw number 2022-7252, being a bylaw to adopt the estimates of the Board of Management of the downtown, downtown Perry Sound Business Improvement Area to strike tax rate thereon for the year 2022, be considered as read a first time. All in favor? Not carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? That's carried. Moved by Councillor Burden, second by Councillor McCann, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time past signed and sealed. Any discussion? Councillor Keith? Yes, I have about three questions for Mr. Beaumont. Uh, thank you. Yes. And uh, my first one is, uh, does this levy have any financial impact on the uh, town's budget? Through you, Your Worship, uh, no, it doesn't. This is a, a separate levy that's only uh, applied to the property owners of, in the uh, downtown business area. Uh, thank you. My other two questions, and I don't know if they can be answered, but when I looked at the budget and uh, I noticed under beautification, there was a, a marked decrease uh, in the 2022 budget in reference to... Um, the removing decorations and uh, banners, as well as the in-ground gardens. There was a substantial decrease. Is there any explanation for that? I mean, it's nice that it's going, it, it would be less money, but is there an explanation? Uh, through you, Your Worship. Um, I see Karen Hobson on the, on the call tonight. She may be best answer that. And she is the treasurer for the DBA, and so she had more insight than I would. And I have one other question then, if she's there to answer that in reference to events. I noticed that uh, the Perry Sound um, lighting here is not too good, shall I say. Girls, 
uh, girlfriend's weekend is almost double. So could somebody, could she explain all three possibly? Thank you. Uh, typically we don't go to the public for, for this, but if in this I'll particular treat. case, since Karen is there, if she can explain it, that might be good. Yeah, through you, Your Worship, we usually yes. in the past have had the administrator here as the DBA rep, um, yes. but seeing that the DBA is, um, doesn't have one right now, um, Steph has her hand up there. Ms. Phillips. Uh, yes. I, may, I may be able to speak to uh, the beautification item. I know uh, that what's in there right now relates to the red grant that we've applied for. I know in the past, the DBA came to council with a beautification project that was like 1.0 and then 2.0. And there were no further like request, requests that came to council as part of our budget. Um, so I think at that, that those monies are just not in there again for 2022. Um, but like in the absence of someone to speak to that, but I can't speak to uh, the girlfriend weekend item. Um, I'm not sure on that. Is Roger here? Maybe he has some info. Councilor Bird, do you have any? There we go. Oh, you were oh, unmuted sorry. there. Sorry about that. Um, I can't really recall either exactly what the reason for that was present time. Um, no, I should, I'm sorry, I should have uh, researched that and, and had an answer, but I, I, uh, I don't know what the answer is at this point. Okay. Councilor Keith. Thank you. Could uh, we, um, as council, receive an email when one does find out what the answer is, just to have clarification on that? Yes. Sorry. Pardon me. Sorry about that. I was just going to say yes. I can uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. I'm I'm happy to follow up with the uh, with the contact there, and then um, circle back to council and up give you an update on what was planned for the girlfriend's weekend. Okay, but this this bylaw is basically their levy, so this is their business. So they need to get the ball rolling uh, for 2022. So. Um, any further comments on, on their, their levy? No? Okay. Anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? I don't see anyone opposed, so that's carried. Moved by Councillor Burden, second by Councillor Barneman, that where as notice was given on April 28th, 2022, online through Star Metro Land Media Classifieds on the town's website thereafter, and in print in the local newspaper on May 5th, 2022, whereas the notice period provide, provided was two days short of the prescribed 21 day notice. And whereas no inquiries have been made during the notice period, now therefore the notice period for provision of notice policy will be waived for the purposes of adopted, the adoption of draft bylaw 2022-7251 regarding water and wastewater services connection fee. Councillor Borneman. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Ms. Phillips, this is a real lengthy uh, <laughs> piece of work that you've put together. I'm hoping that you can give the public a, a condensed version of what we're up to here uh, this evening. Okay, so this is just to give notice that we're, we're proceeding along. The next one is the actual bylaw. So we'll get into that in that particular part of it. So it's just with regard to the notice period. Any discussion with regard to this? Councillor Keith. Uh, 
Uh, my only concern is if you do it two days notice, uh, two days short of the prescribed 21 day notice, then why is there a 21 day notice? And if you do it two days short, then how do you measure the next time? Maybe you do it three days short. I, I'm just concerned about setting a precedent there. Can anybody advise me if we've done this in the past and what are our legal responsibilities when we do that? I know we have done it before, but Ms. Phillips? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I believe we've done it in the past. And I, uh, in speaking with the clerk, I know we were looking at uh, possibly updating the notice bylaw um, because now we can provide notice online and over the web. So there's more ways for people to receive that other than just advertising in the newspaper. But in this particular in case, we haven't really received any inquiries or uh, comments related to the item. So at this time, we thought it was most likely not a concern for council, but that's um, up to you, council in that regard. Okay, Council McCann. Yeah, I, uh, it's a follow up to Councillor um, Keith. I'm not comfortable with this either. Two days isn't very much, and it sounds like it's a bit of nitpicking here, but. Um, and it's nice that we can do things online and through email and such, but I think uh, a deadline, you know, a, a threshold is a threshold and I think we should abide by it. And I'm just worried that somewhere down the line, something could come back to haunt us. Uh, is there a, a need to do this tonight? I have Mr. Harris and Ms. Phillips that want to say something. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll let uh, Ms. Phillips go first. Okay. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I had an idea that we could actually, if council wanted to go ahead with the bylaw, um, make it effective as of a certain date to allow that at least the public knew that it's 21 days ahead of time that it was going to happen sort of thing. So that would be one option. Or if uh, Mr. Harris has another idea, that could be. Um, Mr. Mayor, one of the reasons for getting it on this agenda, and we had tried to actually get it on an earlier agenda, but it's a complicated topic. We want to be fair to all uh, development that'll, that's coming forward for site applications, site plan applications. And um, so putting it in and approving it in today's agenda uh, makes it effective after council adjourns this evening and therefore site plans that may come forward in the next council meeting or a subsequent council meeting would all be equally caught by that. Um, the deferral of this for the two days notice um, would uh, certainly, uh, there would be maybe a scramble to get uh, development applications on the next council meeting, site plans, and it, it starts to create an unlevel playing field. So the advantage of approving it this evening is it's in place and equally applied to all applications going forward. So I would follow up then. So uh, with Ms. Phillips and her suggestion, I would accept that if, if we could put a condition in with it. Other than that, my suggestion might be council is coming together on the last day of this month. We could go into open to uh, ratify this at that point. That's a little sooner than the next regular council meeting. I'm not comfortable with this tonight. I'm sorry. Okay, Council Bachman. Um, sorry, yes, thank you. Um, I would concur with uh, Councillor McCann. Um, my question, I guess, Mr. Harris, um, is that, um, is there a chance that feedback would have been presented to the town um, on those two days that might have reflected the decision making by council? Is there a chance that that could have happened? Um, I, I, I guess uh, I'll, I'll take a, a stab uh, through, through the mayor. This has been out for two days short of the 21 days, so for 19 days and we haven't seen anything. If it had have been out two days earlier, I can't see how we would have uh, received a bunch of um, uh, comments on it if we haven't received any in the last 19 days. Two days earlier, 
I, I don't believe would have made a difference. You, you never know for certain, but we haven't received any. So um, I would think two days earlier wouldn't have made a difference. But there would be a possibility, is that correct? If it was in the paper two days earlier, uh, I suppose that's a possibility. Thank you. Ms. Phillips? Oh, uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, I was just going to mention that in the particular notice uh, that the public was advised that they had until uh, Monday, May 16th to make comment or, inqui or inquiry. Um, so although it was 21 days shy, uh, they were notified that uh, of the date like that they had to make comment, but I, whether that um, changes the opinion or not. So that was actually part of the notification. Yeah. So okay. they would have been aware that that yesterday was the deadline to make yesterday comments was the or deadline. inquiry. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Council McCann. Well, based on uh, what Mr. Harris said, uh, he said there is a certainty. And, and I, I guess my point is it's the principle here, what we're doing and not that, you know, we're talking only two days before or after whatever. I, um, could, maybe could someone speak to the possibility of, uh, of doing this on the 31st of May? Um, through the mayor, I think I'll ask Ms. Johnson to uh, speak to that right now. Uh, Councillor McCann's correct. We have a, a closed meeting education and training scheduled for uh, May 31st. Um, we have to give notice if there's uh, a special meeting of council, which this would be. And I'll let uh, Ms. Ms. Johnson speak to the mechanics of that. To you, Your Worship, um, it is uh, quite possible to call a special meeting for May 31st in open to attend to this one matter. Uh, um, I believe the notice period is uh, only uh, a matter of days, like 48 hours. So if we were to do this, that's the decision of council now, it could be a special meeting on May 31st. I would just venture another comment that we have waived uh, the notice period in the past on a number of occasions. Um, it's certainly, it's a policy of council. It's not a prescribed, it, it's a, it's a, it, it's necessary to have a notice period. Uh, the legislation requires that the town has determined what that notice period is for different classes of different types of issues. And so with this one, our particular notice, um, the require the class was for 21 days. There have been several requiring 21 days that have been, uh, waived in the past. Um, yes, that's what I would say. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I, I'm just I'm just going to say before I go to Councillor Keith and then Councillor Horn that it was in the period it was in the notification as well that the final comment was yesterday at 4:30. So Councillor Keith and then Councillor Horn. I appreciate what was in the notice, but I think that uh, when the train is leaving at 10:40. If you decide, if the train now decides to leave at 1020 and even one passenger was coming for that train and they've now missed it, we have a very unhappy camper. And I think that uh, there was a lot of work put into the report that we're gonna examine further, but uh, to, uh, Two days short, to make a decision two days short, I think we should be following policy and therefore it not be decided tonight. Councilor Horn. As the May 31st council meeting was a added meeting and it wasn't scheduled and I cannot attend, I'd like to deal with this matter tonight. Okay, Councilor Backman. Um, just if we can confirm with council, um, with Ms. Johnson, if we have quorum already noted for the next meeting on the, the special meeting, please. Do you, Your Worship, based on responses that I've received to date, I believe we have quorum. We have quorum based on the responses I've received to date. Thank you, Mr. 
Okay. So we thrashed this around. I've got people that want to put this off to the 31st. Then I need someone to make a recommendation that this be postponed till the 31st, if that's what suppose it is. I've got Councillor McCann and Councillor Keith. And we'll have a vote on then on whether this is postponed. Um, so Will we be voting in the positive or negative then, Mr. Mayor? I want to see a show of hands. So okay. all those in favor of postponing. We've got one, two, three. Those not in favor of postponing. One, two, three, four. So we're not postponing. We're going to move ahead with it. So, um, with regard to that, then, Ms. Johnson, is this resolution then carried? Your Worship, uh, I would say that what you have done is voted on a resolution to table, but it, you haven't actually voted um, in favor or in okay. opposition to the to the resolution, and you should do that. Okay. All right. So I'll, I'm going to ask anyone opposed to passing this resolution. Okay, I've got two opposed. So that's carried. There. So moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Horn. The bylaw number 2022-7251 being a bylaw to amend bylaw 2015-6551. Being a bylaw to govern water and wastewater services to increase sewer and water charges due upon application for connection of services to fairly reflect the cost slash value of the service and recover the rising costs of infrastructure be considered as read a first time. Any, all in favor? Okay. That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings. That's carried. Moved by Councillor Horn, second by Councillor Keith, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Mr. Harris, would you like to give an overview of this particular bylaw and what it is going to do? Uh, and I believe you're, this is something that is an interim uh, before we get to development charges. So go ahead. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the, um, the staff have a, a presentation if council would like. Okay. Um, and as well, we have uh, representatives from uh, Tatham Engineering here to speak to it as well if, if council. I mean, uh, so I'll turn it over to Ms. Phillips. She has some comments and then, uh, and she can then turn it over to uh, uh, Tatham uh, as appropriate. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Okay. I'm just gonna try and share my screen. Can everyone see the presentation? Yep. Yes, okay, perfect. Uh, so good evening, Mayor, Council, and members of the public. So tonight's presenta presentation relates to water and wastewater servicing fees on connection. So on the agenda for this evening, uh, we'll provide uh, information on the infrastructure investment required and the growth projected to continue. Then uh, considerations of the fair approach to generating revenues will be highlighted. And then we'll go into uh, some background on how on calculating the servicing fees and provide uh, the proposed bylaw fee structure for council. Okay, 
So uh, significant infrastructure investment is required. So from the recent capacity study, uh, it was emphasized that capacity constraints need to be addressed and it's critical to address inflow and infiltration uh, to create capacity for additional development as they continue. Um, so 30% of the wastewater treated at the plant right now um, is inflow and infiltration. Uh, and there's uh, some capacity constraints there. So, so that's the problem that we're that uh, is at hand here. Now, growth projected. Uh, recent census data shows that the population has increased at, by 7.4 percent in the last four years for Perry Sound. And uh, going forward, 1,480 new units are forecasted over the next 20 years. So we, so we know that we need to address uh, capacity issues of the existing infrastructure uh, to ensure future capacity continues. So um, there is still available capacity in the system, but funds are needed to address the capacity constraints. The systems were initially funded by property taxes and user fees. Uh, so to, to address the problem, debt is not recommended because the town um, should preserve debt capacity to pay uh, for items that have no other sources of, of revenue. So what's a fair approach to generating revenue? That those that benefit from using capacity pay for capacity. So to do that, Staff propose a servicing fee for new development, and that would be collected on application for connection. And this would generate funds to, uh, to go forward with projects um, more quickly to address um, those capacity constraints. So uh, calculating the servicing fee. So right now the town has frontage fees and heavy load charges uh, that are currently in place. And staff recommend consolidating these and replacing them with a, a new servicing fee to keep things simple um, and cover what we need to. So to calculate the fee, the town engaged Taysom Engineering to assist. So uh, welcome to Bill Van Ryan and Phil Watts who are here tonight. And I'll turn it over to uh, Bill um, to go through um, those details on how we calculated the servicing fees and what the proposed fees are. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Mr. Mayor and members of council, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Can you all hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you. So what we looked at on behalf of the town was to find a fair way to determine what your existing capacity is worth. So the way we looked at this was to say, for every new unit that's created, that's taking value from the town out of your water and wastewater systems. And we tried to determine what's the fairest way to apply that to the types of development that are coming to town. And has been mentioned, um, there are wastewater and water projects that we have identified through the master plans. If you recall, when we were in front of you last, uh, earlier this year and late last year in terms of the upgrade to that pro or the advancement to that project. So quite a significant value of projects that need to be completed in the coming years in the tens of millions of dollars. So um, if we could advance to the next slide, please, Ms. Phillips. Um, through the various ways of looking at it, we came back to your asset management plan, which is now a few years old. Um, was the fairest way to look at the value of your water and wastewater systems. And we looked at those on a residential basis and on a commercial basis. Residential is essentially on a per unit basis. Um, and we looked at various styles of housing and commercial industrial, a little more complicated because we have dry commercial, something like a dry retail space, and we have wet commercial, um, something that might look like car wash, where you've got a, not a very big building, but a, a high water usage. So we tried to look at those 
on their own merits and come up with values that were fair and equitable across the various styles of development. And the, um, the, the, the basics to all of this or the background to all of this is that it really is on the basis of a user pay system. So the more water you use, the more sewage you generate, the higher your connection fee would be, again, so that it's fair and equitable across all the development categories. Could we have the next slide, please, Ms. Phillips? So just in, in high level summary, uh, the town has about 77 and a half million $2020 values um, in wastewater. And you've got an ultimate capacity of about 6,800 units. Water treatment, you're about 61.6 .6 million and 5,000 units. So when we look at that on a per unit cost and add them together, assuming what we call an equivalent residential unit, which is basically a thousand liters per residential unit in a day. And think about that maybe for now as say a three bedroom home on a 50 foot lot. That's kind of our standard. That's where we start as an equivalent residential unit. That ends up being $23,684 per unit. We get the next slide, please, Ms. Phillips. Um, as I say, on commercial, we did look at larger footprints, smaller foot, footprints, uh, wetter uses, drier uses. And when you work through that math, we came up with two values, one based on a square meter basis and one based on a liter per day basis in terms of what that building would liter per day basis in terms of what that building would typically use an average day over the year, liters per day. And that's summarized in the table on the, the next slide, please, Ms. Phillips, where um, if we talk about the three bedroom sort of standard single family home on a standalone lot, you're at the 23,684. If you work that down to an apartment, you're down around $7,100. And just to put that into perspective, we considered the population that goes with that a single family detached unit we're saying is four people per unit and an apartment unit is 1.2 average people per unit. On the commercial industrial, uh, we think it's fair to look at it as the higher of two calculations. So if you are a dry user um, and you really have a low liters per, per day consumption, then we look at it as a dollar Per square meter per day, and that's $65 per square meter. Uh, that's your building footprint. If we look at it as a wet user, where you'll be using um, above sort of the, the, the reasonable threshold of dry retail, then you're up at $22 per liter per day. And that again is based on the calculated flow of that use on the average day over the year. And that's what's kind of important to understand in all of this. We're not looking at the absolute highest flow of the year. We're not looking at zero. We're looking at that number over 365 so that everybody gets treated the same in that regard, recognizing that some days are higher flows than other. This is an average over the year. And these numbers, these calculations of commercial industrial would be resolved at site plan stage um, in conjunction with us looking at the impacts of that building on your sewage and water systems. I think, Ms. Phillips, that's the end of our comments, but I'd certainly be happy to respond to any comments or questions that um, you'd like us to help with. Okay, so um, we can take the slide presentation down. And I can see everybody. Ah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Any questions? Councilor Bornman. Thank you, Your Worship. Mr. Van Ryan, I heard what you said about wetter and drier. Is there a magic number? Is there a formula that is used to determine these things? There is through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
We've looked at this in the old imperial way. Um, in the old imperial way, the Ministry of the Environment used to talk about 60 gallons per thousand square feet a day. Um, that translates into about 12,000 liters per hectare per day of developable land. In simple terms, that really comes down to if you had a, a 10,000 square foot building, um, and I'm trying to think of something that would be close to that, um, maybe something a bit smaller than, than home building, um, you'd be looking at about three cubic meters of water a day. So that's really talking about hand washing, toilet flushing, um, you know, maybe dry retail, some very basic uh, food prep would be in there. If you move anything beyond that to say a restaurant, car wash, an industry that's looking at using water for process, then you would be moving above that um, three liters per square meter per day or 3,000 liters per thousand square meter per day. And um, and you'd be getting into the calculation where you'd be looking at it on a liter per day basis, as opposed to a square meter, square foot basis. I hope that answers your question. Yeah. So, so basically, are you saying that as a proposal comes through, it'll be analyzed and shunted to one of these streams, pending yeah. on the usage that's proposed and the number of fixtures that are required by building permits and stuff? For you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. When an application is made, that information is already being provided. So there's really no extra information being provided, but just this calculation would be done to identify the charge and then resolve which one is the appropriate one to collect. Yes. Okay. Uh, Councillor McCann, then Councillor Keith. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Van Horn. Did um, in calculate, and I might have missed this in, in in your presentation. So when you say you, you get a, a strip plaza that that that's been proposed for a site, um, would there would there be various? Um, you know, you have a restaurant at one end, and you have say. In, uh, business offices on another. So you have multiple or various uses, uh, types of uses, users. Are there various uh, equations that you use for in applying what the cost would be for that site plan? Yes, through you, Mr. Mayor, the, there would be, and it really comes down to there are standard calculations for how many liters per square meter per day is dry retail space. So if there was a dry retail area or an office area, that gives you a component of the flow for a restaurant, a hair salon, something that's more water intensive. There's another set of prescribed numbers that go with those uses. You would add those together and that would give you the total um, volume per day for that combined development. And you would run through this calculation on the square meter basis, on the liter basis, and you would determine which one's the appropriate charge. So any mix of, sorry? Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was just going to say as a follow, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm sorry, I, I called you Mr. Van Horn. But, but, no uh, it, so what about a condominium building? Are there separate to hookups for each uh, unit? Uh, is that still a different story? Or uh, you, you consider one calculation to, for the whole project? Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, my understanding is a condominium, depending on whether it's vacant land or whether it's common element, there might be some difference there in terms of whether there is a individual connection to each unit, um, uh, maybe in a townhouse style, or if it's a vertical, there would be one connection. Either way, it comes back to being the same charge for the development because it's really based on the style of the unit. So if they're all three bedrooms, if they're all two bedrooms, if they're all one bedrooms, um, you run through the math the same way you would on commercial institutional or sorry, commercial industrial, and you come up with that total volume, uh, total use for that development, and that gives you your resultant charge. Okay, great, thanks. 
Uh, Councillor Keith, yes. Yes, thank you to Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Van Ern, I, I just wanted to be clear from what you're explaining here, it seemed to me there's uh, formulas of calculations and I'm wondering how common what is being presented tonight to the town of Perry Sound is that uh, throughout, shall we say, the province of Ontario for other municipalities. Could you explain please? Certainly through you, Mr. Mayor, this is very standard in terms of at the application stage, identifying the type of commercial industrial development and your water consumption and therefore your sewage generation, and even more so common in any residential development. Um, everyone who's coming in for site plan approval anywhere in the province needs to identify your style of units the plumbing fixtures that are in there, and you can easily uh, do this calculation. It's done in every municipality that has a fees bylaw and in every municipality that has a development charge bylaw. Okay. Any further questions, comment? I'm not seeing any. Okay, anyone opposed to passing this uh, bylaw? I don't see anyone opposed, so that's carried. Mr. Van Ryn, Mr. Watts, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you, good night. Good evening, thank you. Item uh, 1031A, uh, moved by Councillor Keith, second by Councillor Horn, that Council aware of the contract, award the contract for the 2022-2032 Culture, Parks and Recreation Master Plan to McQueen Galloway Associates MGA Group, theirs being the highest scoring proposal of three received. Discussion. Councillor Bachman. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Um, first of all, I'm happy to see that uh, we had some bids on the um, plan that we approved um, several years ago. We're again moving in the right direction. However, I've had conversation with uh, Mr. Harris um, in the last couple of days because one of the concerns I have and that I'm not comfortable is that um, I do recall that we removed culture from this plan um, between the time that we approved this in 2008 to date. Um, so again, kind of going back to earlier discussions on policy, I, if I am correct and I understand there is a um, possibility that I am wrong, but I just can almost see the conversation on the paper and we just haven't had the time to um, review with the clerk uh, to find that information through past discussions. And so my concern is that how can we go ahead and approve something that may not have been approved? And I understand that if that is the case, obviously it really is just um, a, a miscommunication, but I really feel that it is vital that this council um, defer this and as we discussed we do have quorum at the next meeting which would allow us the opportunity to have time where I can work with uh, Miss Johnson to verify this um, because I really do think um, it's important that we confirm um, this before making this decision. Okay well uh, Councillor Horn. Again as this was an added call um, Council meeting that uh, will not attend because of previous commitments for May 31st. And I realize that um, it is uh, quorum once again, as pointed out by Councillor Backman. But how could we not include the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame and the Stocky Center in a recreation culture plan? So I'd like to deal with this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I go to Councillor Backman, I'm going to, Councillor Keith, can you take the chair for a moment, please? So my, you know, my concern is, is, okay, so hockey, 
okay, it can be a culture in a community. It's a recreation as well. Uh, Council of Hearn just used an example with the Bobby Orr Hall of Fame. Uh, fishing, okay, which is a recreation, can also be part of a community's culture, okay? Um, boating, again, a recreation, okay, which can also become part of a community's culture. So I think the two kind of go hand in hand in a number of areas, and I think it would be a mistake to not include it within this, within, within this plan uh, to move forward, because I think it ties some things together that I think are very important. So um, I'm hoping that uh, we include, keep this in here and include it in the uh, and part of the plan because it would come this far and it'd be a shame to go backwards. Okay, I'll take the chair back, Councillor Keith. So, Councillor Backman. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I appreciate your comments and I do appreciate uh, Councillor Horns and by no means would I not want you to be part of the conversation. So um, we have come this far, we've waited this long. Um, I'm not certain that deferring it to the next meeting, which would be the first Tuesday of next month, would really um, detour moving this forward. Again, we've waited nearly three years. Um, it just comes down to a matter of principle. Um, I'm not saying that, um, you know, those items can't be part of it, that there, there is recreation programming, which would be defined by the community and through engagement. But I also, in many of the different courses I've taken and webinars that, Culture is also part of a big economic driver. And so most recently I shared an RFP with um, Mr. Harris um, actually today that came in the bids and tenders and it was an actual economic development and culture strategy. And so when you look at the, 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 the wording of this this evening talks about made in, made for Perry Sound. Um, Many people who have been in the culture component in the community and programming know that um, that has really focused on a brand around makers and products made in the community, distribution, and that really is an economic driver. So it was really interesting as I saw this plan, how they coincided with one another and thought, I definitely believe that we need a cultural plan, but I never pushed it when that decision was previously made because I believe we need a really extensive culture plan. And I don't think we'll get the value of the plan that we will for the budget that we've allocated for the recreation plan. And I think in past, that's why we have um, there were past discussions since the December 2018. So I'm not saying to dismiss um, the facilities that might support recreation. I just think that we aren't going to get the value or the, the, the actual cultural plan that this community deserves by going through this process. But I also think that Again, outside of that, I'm, you know, almost 99% positive that we removed that for um, whatever reason I, I have spent, you know, the last couple hours trying to review this. And I guess my question is, is that if that was the case, how can we this evening approve an a, 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 a award, a bid, when that was a component was taken out of it. And, and I'm not saying it shouldn't, but it's just, again, policy and principles. So um, that's really um, all I can say on that is, um, you know, that I think that that's something I would really like to review because um, it really, it's, it's, um, does concern me. So I'm going to ask staff, how was it advertised? How was it advertised and bid upon? Through your worship, the current process was advertised and bid upon through the town's bids and tenders procurement process, um, which is on the town's website. So it's all through e-bidding. No. Uh, okay. Yeah, right. But how was it advertised for, for the bidding process? Was it advertised as a culture, parks, and recreation master plan? Since 2018, since staff started working on this request for proposal, it has been titled a Culture, Parks, and Recreation Master Plan. 
originally in 2008 when it was a culture parks and rock not recreation master plan that was completed um this was going to be either an update or a brand new plan okay all right so if we change that because it was under the bidding process or whatever of how we did that we've advertised it obviously as a culture parks and recreation master plan if we backtrack on that then we're questioning the bidding process then and everything else because then we would have to start all over again because this this has been bid on culture parks and recreation master plan Councillor Backman. Uh, thank you, Worship. I understand the extensiveness that goes into this, um, but it, in the latest task tracker, it is noted, um, which I did send where it actually references, um, obviously it references two things. It's an area-wide uh, plan, which it is not. So that was never <clears throat> updated in the task tracker, but it also does um, note um, in there, which I did share with, um, uh, Mr. Harris, that um, it was noted that it, it, it does reference on uh, to in 2019 that we got no response received from any of the invite staff drafting an RFP for consulting services for the town of Perry Sound focused parks and recreation master plan. So again, I, I, I don't want to be to the details. I'm just really concerned that if that is the case, and we did remove that, like from a policy and, you know, what this whole process of council and decisions and motions and resolutions go, how does that work is, I guess, what I'm trying to understand. Ms. McNamara, and then Mr. Harris. If I may, Your Worship, um, the staff did an extensive search this afternoon for direction, as, as Councillor Bachman is, is suggesting, and uh, we did not find any council direction that referred to the removal of culture from this RFP process. Okay, thank you. Mr. Harris. Um, just uh, in addition, the reference to an area-wide master plan was in the December 18th, 2018 uh, key performance objectives report. And at that time, uh, council may recall, we were trying to get other municipalities to join uh, our effort to come up with an area-wide master plan for recreation. That's what had happened previously. So the reference in the 2018 uh, KPO report does refer to an area-wide master plan. The, the most recent uh, April 14th KPO report uh, just talks about a recreation master plan. It doesn't uh, speak to an area-wide plan because that we've heard from area municipalities that they didn't want to participate. Yeah. All right. So, okay, Councillor Backman, one more kick because. Thank you. So I'd like to um, uh, suggest that uh, the naming of this um, be changed rather from made in, made for Perry Sound. I think it should be called the town of Perry Sound um, plan. I think that is something how people recognize our community and from a branding perspective um, that that's what it's considered in the um, task tracker um, as dated that it is the town of Perry Sound. Um, so I'd just like to to um, make an amendment. Is there a seconder for that amendment? Councillor McCann. Yeah. Okay. Does anyone wish to speak with regard to the amendment? Councillor McCann. Well, it's an age old problem we seem to have when you say Parity Sound, what does that mean? Let alone the East and West districts that recall that uh, Perry Sound was completely under fire a couple of years ago. So I think Councillor Backman has, has a point there as we define the town of Perry Sound. And rather than just, uh, I mean, I think we all sitting at the table here get it made in Perry Sound, but uh, um, what's wrong with defining that just a little bit more? Anyone else? Uh, Ms. Johnson. I'm just looking for clarification. The uh, resolution that we are considering 
doesn't refer to the made and made for Perry Sound. That's in the bylaw. So it is Councillor Backman's proposal, seconded by Councillor McCann's, really meant for the bylaw if we move to that? That's true. That's true. Because we're still, right now, we're on awarding the contract. So. Well, I'm okay with that then. Because the any amendments or whatever on that. So, but this began with a discussion on whether culture was in there or not. And quite frankly, we've advertised it as culture and that sort of thing. And my understanding that it was culture, rec culture, parks and recreation. So, so we have this resolution. So I think we've thrashed this one around enough. Okay. Unless someone has someone that they, something that they want to immediately change or whatever, then fine, but Council McCann. Well, Mr. Mayor, then are we moving this suggested uh, motion to the next uh, the next bylaw then rather than With now? regard to the wording, it will be in with the bylaw. Okay. Okay, this, uh, this resolution has to do with awarding the actual contract. Right. Okay. All right. I'm gonna ask anyone opposed to passing this resolution to award this contract. I don't see any hands up opposed, so that's carried unanimously. Okay, now the bylaw. Moved by Councilor Bornem and seconded by Councilor McCann. That bylaw number 2022-7246 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement with McQueen Galloway Associates MGA Group for the development of a made in, made for Perry Sound culture parks and recreation master plan be considered as a first time. All in favor. Okay, I, everyone's hand was up. All members in favor of having the second and third readings. One hands down. Okay, it's still carried. Moved by Councillor McCann, seconded by Councillor Bornemann. The file above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Now a discussion on this. Yes, Councillor Backman. Um, yes, I'd just like to um, make a change in this bylaw to the naming of this to be referenced to Town of Perry Sound. Okay. And again, I would renew my second that, uh, but I am interested to hear what other council members have to say about this. Any discussion on the word change with regard to development of a Town of Perry Sound Culture Parks Recreation Plan instead of made in, made for Perry Sound. Any comments? Councillor Keith. I was just gonna say, I think it's catchy the way, the way it is right now. It's not too wordy. Uh, I like it just the way it is. Thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Horn. This name was um, proposed all along, so I'm not in favor of changing it. Thanks. Okay. Um, Councillor Bachman. Um, thank you, Worship. I just feel that it's important as we go through these process with plans that the community, um, you know, put a label on it rather regularly. Once we label it, we negate it. And so at this point, um, I think a generic town of Perry Sound is what uh, we are known for. And if something else evolves as a theme through community engagement and consult extensive consultation, I definitely would support that. But I think uh, before we do that, I think uh, the generic town of Perry Sound is um, what I would suggest uh, so we can allow for those kinds of things to be developed and built by the community. Um, okay, anyone else want to speak on the amendment? No? Okay. Anyone? I'm going to ask for all those in favor then. All those in favor of the amendment with the word change? One, two. Those opposed? Council Barnumman, you? Uh, 
I'm abstaining. I think that either way, this is fine. It's it's not going to change materially the the product. Okay. All right. It's defeated. Um, so, any other questions, comments on the on the bylaw itself? Nope. Okay. Anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? I don't see any hands up in opposition, so it's carried. Moved by Councillor Keith, second by Councillor Burden. That bylaw number 2022-7250 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement with Pacific Tier Solutions Incorporated to implement Book King recreation management software be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third reading? That's carried. Moved by Councillor Horn, second by Councillor Borneman, the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time passed, signed and sealed. Any discussion? No? Okay, anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? I don't see anyone opposed, that's carried. Moved by Councillor Horn, second by Councillor Keith, the Council award the contract for the Bobby Orr Community Center HVAC project to Western Mechanical, theirs being the highest scoring of 10 proposals received. Any discussion? Is your hand up, Councillor Borneman? Yes, I'm wondering if Ms. McNamara could explain how these proposals were evaluated for someone who may not have access to the entire agenda. Through your worship, um, these, pros, these, these um, proposals were evaluated based on a variety of, of criteria, including reference checks for similar projects, uh, overall budget meeting the um, established grant that we have for the project, energy efficiency rating. Um, so Mr. Pengra um, assisted greatly with the, this project in terms of assisting with determining energy efficiency ratings for these units, um, determining that they uh, were receiving a better bang for our buck uh, than we were the, uh, the former units that were on the rooftop. Um, and overall project timeline for completion. Okay. All right. Any further questions, comments? No. Anyone opposed to passing this uh, resolution? No. Nope. None are opposed. That carried. Made by Councillor McCann, second by Councillor Burden, the bylaw number 2022. 7248 being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement with Western Mechanical for the Bobby Orr Community Center HVAC project be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings. And that's carried. Moved by Councillor McCann, seconded by Councillor Borneman. That the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? No? Okay, anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? No one's opposed, that's carried. Moved by Councillor Keith and seconded by Councillor Backman that bylaw number 2022-7247. Um, being a bylaw to authorize the execution of an agreement with Learn to Kayak Incorporated for use of Yvonne Williams Park as a Learn to Kayak Training Center be considered as a first, read as a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? 
Now it's carried moved by Councillor Borneman, seconded by Councillor Burden, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. I think this is great. So, Councillor Keith. Yes, thank you. I just have a question about, is this a, a local group or company that has now been created to uh, take over this experience? And will there be monitoring of the situation so that we know next year if uh, A-OK, -okay, we'd love them have, have them back? Through your worship, thank you, Councillor Keith. Absolutely, this is a new group to town. Um, instead of seeing the big sculling boats, you're going to see the kayaking. It's really nice to see all these recreational opportunities open up on the Stakeland River. I know uh, a lot of the residents along the river like to see this nice quiet activity take place. Yes, this will be monitored this year to ensure no problems or, or issues occur. And this will be brought back to council next year for future consideration. Thank you. Good. Any other? Questions, comments? No? Okay, anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? No one's opposed, that's carried. Another activity. By Councillor Keith, second by Councillor Backman, bylaw number 2022-7249 being a bylaw to provide refunds of building permit fees paid under Schedule C, fee schedule of bylaw 2005-4847 be amended for permits to create an accessory dwelling unit within an existing dwelling uh, with the intent to allow for the rapid development of additional accessory dwelling units be considered as read a first time. All in favor? That's carried. All those in favor of having the second or third readings? That's uh, carried. Moved by Councillor Horn, seconded by Councillor Keith. That the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second or third time, time passed, signed, and sealed. Any discussion? No. Anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? No one's opposed. That's carried. By Councillor McCann, second by Councillor Backman, that bylaw number 2022-7253 being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council be considered as read a first time. All in favor? And that's carried. All members in favor of having the second and third readings? Carried. Moved by Councillor McCann, second by Councillor Backman, that the bylaw above mentioned be considered as read a second and third time, passed, signed, and sealed. Anyone opposed to passing this bylaw? No, that's carried. So prior to adjourning, I'd like to offer the following information to the public regarding the next council meeting. The next regular meeting of Council of the Town of Perry Sound is Tuesday, June 7th, 2022 at 7 p.m. The meeting will be held at the Town of Perry Sound Council Chambers at 52 Seguin Street, Entrance via Gibson Street, it will be live streamed and recorded. All regular council meetings are held at 7 p.m. on the first and third Tuesday of each month, except January and August where only one regular meeting is scheduled. The council meeting schedule, notice of the, notices of special council meetings, complete agendas and minutes and instructions on accessing live streamed and recorded council meetings are all posted on the town's website. Go to www.perrysound.ca under news and public notices and your TV airs council meetings on Saturday at 9.30 a.m. following a regular council meeting. For Kojiko listings, contact www.yourtv.tv. Thank you everyone and have a good night.